Hi, my name's Andy Parkey, Managing Director of the multi-award winning Speed Screed. I'm here today to talk about bonded and unbonded screed. So to really get a, a picture, we just need to explore uh, each one of those scenarios. So when a screed is described as bonded, this means that it is connected, it's directly bonded to the substrate. So to understand what that bond is, we must uh, explore what a substrate is. So this, the substrate in, in our case is generally a structural substrate. So it's a substrate, so what's going to be under, underneath the screed? Uh, generally, the, the screeds that you're looking at are generally non-structural, so they rely on the substrate to be structural. Uh, and so the floor element can be a number of things. So the, the structural element can be in situ concrete. So the concrete's been poured directly into the, into the building. It can be beam and block. So concrete blocks uh, placed onto uh, beams and then the leveling screed on, on top. It can be precast planks, uh, which are manufactured off site, uh, delivered to site and then craned into place and then screeded on top to give the, the, the final leveling layer. And then uh, structures such as metal decking can also be uh, used in a bonded situation. So how does it actually bond in the first place? Now, if you was putting just a screed onto uh, a concrete substrate, then without any, any, any method of bonding, this would be actually classed as semi-bonded because in some areas you may get the screed bonding to the concrete substrate. But to truly bond, you would need to use bonding agents and primers. So bonding agents sometimes require uh, an addition of, of the cement into the bonding agent. And generally, uh, uh, when it's uh, mixed like that, it tends to go in wet on wet. So as the, the screed's going in wet, as in uh, for a semi in a semi-dry application, not uh, a liquid screed, but in a semi-dry application, it would generally go wet on wet. Uh, for other types of screeds, sometimes uh, if it's a, a smoothing compound, then it'd be a primer. Generally, the, the primer would be dry when the, screed's, uh, when the screed's going on. Before you get to the stage of putting the bonding agents on, you need to know that the surface is, uh, is okay, is sound, and clean and free from uh, things like dust, oil, grease, uh, etc. So it may require some surface preparation, not only sweeping, vacuuming, uh, vacuuming of, the, of the surface, but it may also require grinding, shot blasting, maybe even scabbling to uh, open up the surface. So it may be if that is uh, a recently laid concrete substrate, it's, it's probably going to need the, the top matrix taking off to open up uh, the, the matrix to allow it to bond to the screed. And as we say, that can be grinding, it might be shot blasting, uh, it uh, could even uh, you know, re require specialist cleaning agents to the surface, depending what those products have, have been used, if it's food industry, if it's car related. Uh, so it's always best just to take advice uh, relating specifically to that. So when would you use a screed in a bonded situation? So generally it, it tends to be when the screed needs to be thinner. So it needs to be at the bottom end of the capability uh, of the screed. So when you're looking at that, if it was a smoothing compound, that could be a uh, feather edge, it could be a one mil, two mil, up to five and, and, and 10 mil for that. If it's the uh, sand and cement screeds, then you're looking at the specialist screeds going down at around 10 mil. British standard for a traditional screed uh, states 40 mil. When it's above 40 mil for say a traditional screed, then, a, a, Per se, there isn't a requirement for bonding, 
but it, it may be that it's been specified that it requires bonding. So, you know, there, there may be the possibilities of requiring bonding, even if the product per se doesn't require it at that particular, that particular thickness. So it'd be bonded directly to the uh, to the substrate, and generally you wouldn't hear that hollow sound that you get when it's not bonded. When you're hearing the hollow sound, that doesn't mean that it's uh, a screed is likely to fail. It's just when uh, a screed is quite thin, it relies on that bond, and so you, you you know you would need it to be bonded if it was below the minimums unbonded. So moving on to what is unbonded, then generally that's when a screed is laid onto uh, a membrane. So you would class that type of construction as unbonded because the, the screed doesn't come in direct contact with the substrate and so there is no bond between the two. The other uh, method is floating construction. So floating construction is when you have insulation. So effectively the screed itself appears as though it's, uh, as though it's floating. So when it's in that application, there is no bonding and you have a, uh, a, a possibly a membrane in there and the insulation. So I hope that helps. I hope that clears up the definition between bonded and unbonded. If you do have any further uh, questions, I'd be only too happy to ask uh, to answer them. So please get in touch. Thank you.